absolutely. All right, great. So um, welcome to the Hockey WA Coach Education Network. Um, it's great to come back and have the feedback from uh, our May uh, webinars and, and workshops. Um, and we're delighted to offer some more uh, programs. And today I'm delighted to welcome uh, Matt Cook, who's currently residing in Cairns, Queensland. Um, what I'll do immediately is, um, with pleasure, hand you over to Matt. Um, who can give you a bit of an intro regarding our technology in coaching workshop and a little bit about himself. Perfect. Thanks, Ethan, Mark, for the introduction. I might move on to sharing my screen straight away um, and we'll, we'll get started, guys. So, so just, to suggest, just in the chat feature, that you can see my screen, okay? Can you see that okay, Mike? Yeah, I think we're okay, Manny. That's fun. Guys, well, uh, yeah, thanks for the introduction. Hockey WA. Um, it's a here, and I'm, I'm looking forward to chatting to everyone about hockey. Uh, sort of being a hockey nerd, uh, and uh, and really enjoy talking about technology and how to integrate it in, into our coaching. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I've been a hockey coach, for, professional hockey coach, for close to ten years now. Um, spent the majority of my time in, in Queensland and had a had an eighteen month stint over in, in Belgium, um, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about my highlights and, and stuff in the next couple of slides. Um, but in today's presentation, um, I'd like to discuss technology and coaching, what it looks like, and how we can integrate it uh, into our coaching. Um, I'm definitely not an expert in in coaching or in in performance analysis. Um, I'm quite young uh, as a coach and quite young as a, um, as a performance analysis. And I'm sure there's people in this, in this chat that probably have more knowledge and experience than me, but I just wanted to take the opportunity tonight to share my knowledge and my personal knowledge and experience um, to help you guys and, and hopefully pass on some, some new content to a few of you guys there. Um, we're looking at trying to, to make this as broad as possible. So not just focusing on, on high performance, but focusing on technologies that are re readily available for all coaches of all levels of experience to benefit your program. Um, as I mentioned before, um, uh, coach of, of nine, nine years of professional experience. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with me after the presentation, uh, here's my email address and I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, a little bit later. Um, for me, the highlights of my coaching so far, um, reasonably young career, but um, I've had the pleasure to work with um, some junior Australian teams. Uh, in 2014, I was lucky enough to, to go to the Youth Olympics, um, and that was a fantastic experience. Um, from a development point of view, David Guest was the head coach, um, and I was the analyst for that, and David Guest um, is a fantastic analyst, coach and analyst. And, um, and he gave me some fantastic knowledge and experience. And that was a, an amazing opportunity and a really positive experience where we were lucky enough to, to win the gold medal at the Youth Olympics. Um, and since then, I've also had the opportunity to work with the Belgian National Junior Women's Program and then Australian National Junior Men's Program in 2019. And uh, both really positive experiences and definitely something that I love to continue to be involved with in the future. In today's presentation, um, I want to try and talk about who we're coaching, specifically the new generation of athletes um, and what's important to them and how we can use technology to connect with them better. And then talk about specifically the technologies that are available in coaching um, from a tactical side, technical side, uh, physical and well-being side. Um, and then also talking about coach education and self-analysis and what technologies are available there. Um, and then at the end, I'm happy to, to unmute the mics and, and have a chat with you guys um, face to face um, and go from there. But in the meantime, if you do have any questions, um, feel free to use the chat feature um, and um, I'll, Mark will be monitoring that. So if we have any questions, he's, he's happy to fire away there. So we'll move on to the to the first question. So um, Mark, do you mind if you just um, throw it up there? So the first question for you guys, and I'd just like you to answer, I'll give you a minute or two. Um, so what age do you guys currently coach? Um, I just want to try and make this as specific um, to you and your program as possible. 
I don't want to throw out heaps of junior content if the majority of you guys are coaching senior programs or vice versa. So please just take a minute just to put in um, what the average age of athletes that you're currently coaching in the chat. Um, I'll just give you 30 seconds or a minute to, to put that in, please. Perfect. Thanks heaps, guys. Awesome. So I'd like to try and make it as interactive as possible. So I've got a couple of questions for you guys just to um, make sure it's not just my voice the whole, <laughs> the whole time. Um, so just make sure that if, if we ask a question, if you can just try and um, try and answer that as quickly as possible. But thank you very much. Perfect. All right. So majority of you guys just scanning through it now a uh, coaching uh, Generation Z. Um, so Generation Z is, is usually defined as um, people born between 1997 and 2010. Um, I've taken some information from a Leaders in Sport um, paper that was sent to me a few weeks ago, and it gives us a little bit more information about Generation Z. Um, Generation Z um, have grown up with, with heaps of uh, ever-changing technologies, such as the internet, mobile phones, Bluetooth, social media, and they're always, they're always connected. So typically Generation Z, um, they can be using up to five devices on the daily, and they can spend up to 10 hours in front of those devices a day, okay? Due to this, they're readily available and they're, they're connected um, all the time. Um, and because they're connected all the time and they've got this, these devices in front of them all the time, their attention spans are probably a little bit less than the generations previous to them. Um, purely and simply because they can, it's at their fingertips, whatever they want, they can get it quickly. Um, and, and that's kind of how, how they, they like to learn. They like to have information and answers quickly rather than having to wait uh, long periods of time um, to get that information. It's really important that uh, we keep uh, the Generation Z uh, athletes and students engaged. Um, they prefer to, to be involved in the process um, rather than a passive, passive bystander in a lecture environment or, or just listening for long periods. They, they really like to be um, part of the process. So that's what we know. Um, and then I'd like to talk about how, how we can coach them. So I was listening um, a couple of weeks ago now. So I think one of the first presentations that, that Mark was running, and it was with Jack, um, talking about small-sided games. But he had a saying that really um, kind of stuck with me. Um, and I really like the quote. It's, it's connection before correction. And I think that's really important um, with, when working with all athletes, but particularly Generation Z. Um, it's important that the coach makes that connection and understands how the athletes like to learn, how they don't like to learn, um, and, and keeping them involved in that process. So you're always trying to change and always trying to better your process and keep the athlete involved. As they grow as a person, you can grow with your delivery as well. I think we can definitely use technology um, in that and, and keeping connected with those athletes in that, in that regard to, to make sure they're, they're connected and, and they're aware of, of how you're trying to, to coach um, is, and, and the information that you're trying to pass on is really important as well. But when we do communicate that with them, I think it's important that we adapt our communication to the technologies that they're used to and that they, they rely upon. Um, I'd like to just ask another question, if that's all right. Um, so Mark put it previously, but for the most downloaded apps in 2020, so if you haven't already, just, just a quick couple of um, ideas. So if you can just put what you believe the most downloaded apps or most downloaded and most used, sorry, apps are in 2020. Just before we move on to the, the second point here. TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, exactly, yep. So went on, went on today to the app store and, and looked at some of the information and data about the most used, uh, most updated and most downloaded applications um, from in 2020. And a lot of them are, yes, TikTok, Instagram, FaceTime, House Party, 
Snapchat, Zoom, and what do they all have in common? For me, they're, they're all visual. So it's not like the old, the old SMS or, or email. A lot of the applications are visual where, athlete, where people can see, see things, connect with people and, and talk to them and see them face to face um, or see pictures, see movies, see videos. All right. So that's, I think that's how um, the, this generation likes to connect. Um, and a lot of them believe that emails and SMSs are how their parents communicate. So when, when coaching these athletes, I think the use of video, the use of, these, of FaceTime and Zoom, um, the ability to meet with them, or if you can't meet with them face-to-face, -face, the, the ability to talk to them with your, your phone on, on the FaceTime or on the Zoom um, is, is a good way to connect with them. And I think um, from, the, from the, the paper, it, it shows that they really connect better in those conversations um, rather than, than text messages or, or emails. Finally, um, talking about being brave and to facilitate um, in your coaching, um, create a live content, be brave to let, let, these, let the Generation Z athletes take control of their learning and you, and you facilitate the environment um, so that they're constantly engaged and connected and involved um, with, the, with their learning and, and you're, you're as a coach being brave to, to give them that freedom. Okay, and there's a lot of applications and a lot of technologies that we can use um, to make that happen. And I'd like to go now and, and progress and talk about that um, in a little bit more detail. But before we do, I've got a little clip here from Roberto Martinez, who is the Belgian men's football or soccer head coach. And he's just talking about the importance of, of technology in sport. Just a very brief clip. It's essential um, for an analyst, for a coach, for a team, for a player to be able to access the latest technology. It allows you to, to be at the forefront of being part of a high performance environment. Okay, very, very brief, but very strong words there. And, and the quote there is just highlighted from Roberto on the left hand side. But now that we understand uh, who we're coaching um, and, and we understand how much they rely on, on technology, I want to talk about what technologies are available um, to, to try and give the, the athletes a connection uh, and, and the coach and the ability to connect with the athletes um, using this technology. So I'd like to talk about uh, the tactical technology, um, the, the analysis software there and, and other forms there, the technical coaching technologies that we can use physical, mental and well-being technology, and then communication and self-analysis technology um, that we can use uh, in this. So I'll ask, always ask why and how we use this technology, and then I'll also talk about what there is available, um, and I'll talk about some products that I've used, um, some cheaper alternatives. Obviously, we're trying to make this uh, as broad as possible, so obviously not all clubs and programs can afford um, all the technology that's available. So I'll try and um, list some cheaper alternatives or other options that you can use that will still uh, assist you in that particular area. Um, and then we can definitely chat um, at the end uh, in more detail if you have any more questions or fire, if you have any questions, fire away in the chat feature as well. So first we'll move on to, to tactical coaching. Um, so I think it's really important um, and it's probably one of the most commonly used um, technology in, uh, in hockey is, is tactical uh, coaching technology and, and analysis software. Um, why, why do we use it? Um, well, I think it's important to provide um, coaches with the uh, coaches with. No, um, speaker. Sorry. Um, I think it's important to, um, to provide. Um, coaches and players the ability to review data and, and review clips um, to, to watch from key instances and key information from the match and how we do this well there's a number of sports analysis softwares available um, and then it gives the athletes and the, the coaches the ability to do this what there is well probably the biggest one at the moment in and the biggest player in this performance analysis um, field is, is huddle uh, who, who own or who have merged with Sports Code, um, and they're, they're one of the bigger players. Um, they're very, very big 
uh, company and they are always adapting to the market and they have a number of different products that are suited for all, all levels of program from clubs to high performance. Um, Coach Logic is also another, another big player in the field uh, and I believe they have a partnership with the FIH Hockey Academy um, and they've got some fantastic programs and analysis um, for hockey specifically. And then there's another few options that are a little bit cheaper. Um, obviously not, they are used in hockey, but not, not as often as the other the big players, uh, Luongo Match and Knack Sport. Um, but I'm just gonna play a quick clip um, showing uh, my experience and giving you a very, very, very brief um, tutorial on, on Huddle and Sports Code uh, and talking about some of the features that I've used uh, very briefly um, with the program. Let's take a look into Huddle Sports Code in more detail. The first area that we'll look at is creating a code window. When creating a code window, it's important that the coaching staff work together to create a simple but effective code window that will enable the coaching staff to pull out the key information that they're looking for. You can do this with buttons and labels, and you can do this on computer and iPad. This example here is an example on iPad using iCoder. Once you've got your code window set up, you can then move on to filming the match. When filming the match, it's important that you try and find an elevated position to film the match so you can get the best view possible. Also take into consideration the lighting so you're not filming into the sun with glare, and also to try and find a position that you have some cover in case the weather turns poor. If you're limited with your resources, you can film the game and then code it after the match. However, if you've got the resources available, it's more efficient to film the game and code the game live. You can do this on computer or on iPad. When you're learning to live code, it's important that you practice as much as possible. It may seem a little bit daunting at the start. However, the more you practice, the easier and the more familiar you'll become with the process. When you're, when you're coding live on a computer, I find it easier to use a wireless keyboard. Um, so you can use one hand to input the data using hotkeys on the wireless keyboard and the other hand to, to film and pan the camera. Additionally, if you have a zoom bar with the, the video camera, it does help if you're only using one hand. Once you've filmed and coded the game, you can then review it. This is called a timeline and this this basically is all the things that we've coded throughout the game. So rather than going, having to go and look for an individual instant, all the information that we've coded and we wanted to see has been uh, brought up on, on our timeline. So for example here, we've just selected goals from team two, and this will show you the goal and, this, and the lead up to the, to the goal. This is a great way and it makes it a great way to see data and it makes it a lot more efficient process rather than having to try and scroll through a whole game and find the information. The information will be there for you. Another way and a, and a much more efficient way of, of finding information is using output windows. Output windows are a great way to, to see statistics, numbers, and also link that to videos. So I'll bring up an old example here of an output window. You can see here there's a number of a lot of different numbers that are that are being spat out by the, the computer. This is linked with the timeline, so it's important that you have a timeline open um, and then you can see all this information. For example here, I'll click on the goals. It says num one goal is scored by Belgium, so it shows you that data and then also gives you access to the video. So you can see here, we've selected that. Um, we can speed it up a little bit. All right, and then it'll show you the particular goal being scored. Okay. So there's just an example of how, how an output data, how sorry, and how output window looks, gives you that data in terms of the numbers of the events, and also still gives you the ability to watch the, the particulars. We can then talk about live to bench. Live to bench is a great way for coaches to receive output windows, whether it's data, graphs, key information, or review clips from the timelines or the output windows sent to them from the, the device that's capturing that information. It's possible by connecting a device on the bench to the same network as the, the device that's collecting that information. Finally, we can talk about database in clips. So over a season, you'll collect a lot of key information from your games and also from scouting opposition's games. So here's an example of a, 
um, a database of penalty corners collected from a tournament. You can see here, these, these um, videos here are actually stacked as well, which gives us the opportunity to review the instances from multiple angles. So we can look at penalty corner attack and penalty corner defense patterns from multiple angles to see if there's any opportunities available. It's a great way to keep records of your team, but also keep records of the opposition to see their progress and see their variations from throughout the, the tournament or throughout the season. Output windows can also be used on databases. So it's easy to, to look at um, trends and, and produce data from these series of clips. Perfect. So um, just, I suppose, going back to, back to that point um, and talking about a little bit more about the tactical technology available, um, in my opinion, Sports Code is, and Huddle Sports Code is a fantastic um, tool. Obviously, it does come at a price and there are cheaper alternatives available. Um, and I think Huddle Sports Code comes into its own the more you use it. So if you're going to be using it regularly and you're going to be filming matches and analysing matches and you have the resources available to do it, there's a lot of benefits of the product in terms of databasing, uh, output windows, and the way that you can uh, gain that information and also share that information with your players. Um, it's got some really good features there. However, if you're only going to film one or two games throughout the season, you don't have those resources available, maybe it's worthwhile looking at some cheaper alternatives um, that you can just simply film the game and then code a few instances and review it on a timeline. Let's now talk about uh, technical coaching in, in hockey. Um, and I think, as we mentioned before, Generation Z athletes in particular, they want instant feedback straight away. They want to be able to, to be involved in their learning process. They want to be able to see things. And I think when they're learning different techniques, you know, whether it's a penalty corner skill as such as a drag flick or an injection, or even as simple as looking at a hitting technique, um, it's important that we have technology that's available to give them the opportunity to review that and learn and grow and be involved in, in that process. So there's some really good technologies about, um, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, the benefit also of some of these technologies is the ability to, to film, analyze live, but also send that clip to the, to the athlete's mobile device um, for them to review uh, at home as well. Specifically though, the athlete, their apps, sorry, that are good, good for that. I've found Coach's Eye to be quite effective and, and Huddle Technique, another one of the Huddle products um, that I've found to be really useful. Um, it, they give us the ability to, to analyze uh, slow motion or st stop the videos and, and make them still images and give us the ability to draw on them. So we can look at angles, we can highlight, and as I mentioned also, we can do voiceovers so that we can send that uh, information to the athletes and they can they can see the, um, the, uh, the angles, they can see the highlighted areas, but they can also hear the coach describe uh, and give them feedback uh, when they're watching the clip. Cheaper alternatives, if, if you don't have um, the money to, to be able to, or the resources to be able to, to get huddle technique or, or coach's eye, and it's not a lot, um, but if, if you're not able to do that, simple as is the camera app, um, it's still useful, you can still just record with the movie um, and then pause and, and scroll slow motion or scroll fast forward to, to show athletes and give them instant feedback um, when they're, they're working on their technical game. Here's a quick video I prepared just of me um, using, this, using this technology. Um, so this is just in the, in the backyard or the, the garage, um, but it's just giving athletes um, visual uh, feedback straight away um, using, using the application here and getting them involved in the, in the process. So showing them, um, giving them feedback, letting them make some points or observations. And, and some feedback there. And then we'll also look at the next clip of a video there, I've sent to a Belgian player. You'll see player. the hook of your hockey stick is, is pointing uh, across or away from where you're intending to hit. So we've just highlighted that there. If you can, you need to try and get the hook of the hockey stick pointing in the direction you will hit the ball. This will just help with a cleaner downswing um, and you'll find that your contact of the ball will be a little cleaner. 
The next point I wanted to identify, if you could potentially a little bit more knee bend, it's not bad, but maybe a little bit more could assist, but the positioning of the ball when you make contact. So you'll see here, it's just behind your foot, which isn't too bad, but maybe potentially if you hit, have the ball a little further in advance with your stance, the weight can be transferred a little better and you'll find you'll add a little bit more power to your, to your strike of the ball. So you'll see here when you make contact with the ball, it's just behind that stance. Finally, the swing arc, your arc is really, is really quite good. So you can see there, I've, I've given the feedback to the athlete and you can share that on Messenger, WhatsApp, email. Uh, it's really able, uh, you're able to, to share that quickly. You might also notice I was having a little chuckle to myself um, in that particular clip. Um, you can use that voiceover, voiceover feature in that particular clip. That was for a, a girl in Belgium who was 12 years old and English wasn't her, her first language. She, she could understand it reasonably well. Um, but if she, you probably noticed I was speaking very slowly and trying to, to speak very clear um, so that she could understand and, and take away those key points. We'll move on to, to uh, physical and uh, mental well-being uh, technology. And this is quite a, um, I suppose, a, a technology that's come on leaps and bounds in the last couple of years. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, well-being of athletes um, and there's been some fantastic advancements in, in this field um, to make sure that the athletes... Um, uh, well-being is the most important. And I think first and foremost, we are dealing with people uh, before we're not just dealing with hockey players these are people and it's important that we um, we make sure we, we look after them as best possible and some of these applications um, and, and technologies um, are definitely helping us in this field um, so first and foremost we'll talk about GPS um, this is from a physical training point of view um, and it's, it's really important that we discover the, the physical information in training and games so that we can plan a detailed program and at a club level I see it quite regularly where we have a coach and not through no fault of their own, um, they don't have the, the technologies maybe available or they don't have their physical trainers available to assist them, um, but they're just going through a, uh, an old program or a program that they may have used themselves or, or just coming up with a series of drills or exercises, but there's not, maybe there's not necessarily an understanding of the load that the athletes are are facing in the games and having the GPS uh, information is a really good way of understanding the conditions that they'll face in terms of the number of sprints, the total distance that they'll cover and drawing that information out so that you can uh, come up with a, a program that um, is similar to the conditions that they'll face in the games to prepare them as best possible. Additionally, as we, as we touched on before, the monitoring the physical and mental well-being of athletes um, it's a fantastic way to do this and, and how it's done is, is coaches can give surveys, forms and questionnaires to gain an insight into the athlete's well-being uh, on and off the pitch. Um, there's a number of, of different options here. For me, what I've worked with before, I haven't worked with a, as a head coach, I haven't worked with a heap of GPS data, um, but um, GPS sport from my limited experience is, is probably one of the better ones um, that they've got. Catapult is another good GPS brand as well. It's a little bit cheaper as well if you're working with the budget. Um, and then athlete monitoring systems. There's some fantastic ones um, to look after the, fence, the mental and physical well-being of athletes. Um, they do come at a cost. Um, so you can actually do this um, yourself. And there is a lot of great resources out there. Um, a couple of them are the scale of Borg. And that's a really good um, way for coaches, um, particularly physical trainers and, and, and head coaches of programs to uh, evaluate the uh, intensity uh, of the training, of the training session, and then gain feedback from the athletes to see whether they, um, you met your, your outcomes there as to how hard you wanted to, to do the training. We'll take a look here at an example. So in the top left corner, we've got the ball grading scale. So an example of this would be, um, we might be training on a Friday um, in Belgium and we, play on, we played on Sunday. So we might not necessarily wanna have a super high intensity training 
on the Friday. So the coaching group might meet and we might only want to have a, a five or a four level of training. So we design a training program that we believed was, was of that intensity. And then the athletes uh, would be surveyed um, away from the pitch. Um, sometimes in groups, if you do it with the whole group there, um, because some people don't necessarily want confrontation or they just want the easier option. Uh, they'll just tend to agree with whatever the, the other members are, are saying. So we, we got that feedback individually um, by, by shooting a message or, or a quick questionnaire or a Google form to see if the athlete um, rated their training the same. And then you can, you can kind of, if you've got a lot of athletes saying it was a lot harder than, than your training, then you've got to look at yourself and, and see if you can modify it. Or you can also look at your program to make sure that they're not going into the training already fatigued. Um, from a, a well-being point of view as well, um, here's just a, a simple questionnaire, um, just five simple questions. But if you keep this information over a long period, you can track um, the athlete's well-being over the over the program, um, looking at the fatigue levels, the quality of sleep and recovery, uh, soreness, stress levels, and mood. And I think the ability to, to look at this physical and mentally, so looking at the athlete's mood is important as well. Um, we don't want athletes to experience low mood at all um, and, and obviously not for an extended period of time. So if, if you are recording that, then you can try and provide that support and, and, and give the athlete, um, put, put them onto someone that can help them uh, if they're experiencing that over a long period of time. Okay. Finally, we'll move on to um, communication and self-analysis technology. Um, this is probably, in my opinion, underutilised um, a lot in hockey coaching. Um, it, is, it is common, I suppose, to see coaching and coaching groups um, hooked up on radios and headsets. Um, and I think it's a really valuable way um, to provide feedback um, to, to, the, to the team and, and gain information um, to the to the other team staff. A good example of this was when I'm working as a performance analyst, a lot of the time I'm on the radio to the head coach and they, they'll be um, calling coach specials. So the coach might want to see a particular clip or have a particular clip uh, highlighted. So post-match or even during the match, they can have a look at that at clip and, and review it. Um, additionally, if there's a a tactical adjustment or some feedback that needs to be given to a player that might be on the other side of the pitch and you've got an assistant coach on that side in the grandstand or, or on, the, on the fence, um, rather than yelling and screaming and giving away your tactical adjustment or your advice to the, to the player where everyone can hear it, the coach can use the radio to communicate with the assistant on the other side of the field who can then give that feedback a little bit more subtly. The other area that I mentioned before that's underutilized in my opinion is, is self-analysis in coaching. Um, I've tried it a few times and found it to be a fantastic way to uh, monitor our coaching efficiency as a, as a coaching group um, in terms of looking at my communication as a head coach or the, the manager, the assistant coaches communication with athletes and, and conduct on the sideline. So uh, how we did this was just simply getting a GoPro and, and filmed us on the, on the bench um, so that we could see our body language, hear our conversations, or as best possible hear our conversations with the athletes, um, and then and review this post game. Um, it's probably not done enough, and it is quite confronting sometimes. You are taking yourself out of your comfort zone, and you do see yourself in a different light sometimes. Um, but I think it is a good way to to move forward and grow as a coach and as a coaching group um, to look to look at yourself uh, a lot as well. Just like you're looking at the players on the field. Uh, sometimes it's important to look at yourself on the sideline um, to, to get the best out of yourself. Uh, how we do this? Well, as I mentioned before, radios and headsets are readily available and they're quite cheap. Um, a cheaper alternative uh, on, the, on the phones now, uh, with the App Store, you can, you can just use the walkie-talkie apps. There's some cheap ones or some even free ones um, if you don't have radios and headsets available. Uh, and then to, to get that feedback on the bench, I like to use a non-invasive camera, so a, little, a GoPro uh, mounting that in the corner of the dugout. Um, it's good, it's not bulky, and it's not overly obvious. I think it's important to communicate to the players so that you are being filmed and explain why, um, just so uh, they're aware that that's there as well. Um, we'll take a look at a clip. This is a little bit light-hearted, but 
Uh, have a look at some examples of some coaches being filmed uh, when they're coaching and there's some quite funny reactions and there's also quite a, an interesting insight uh, into a netball program uh, right at the end. So just take a look, have a listen and, uh, um, and it'll be interesting to get your thoughts at the end. interesting insight a bit of a laugh with some of the rugby and AFL uh, coaches um, but really interesting insight into the sidelines on a netball environment to see how the coaching group dealt with that difficult situation um, if you can um, obviously it depends on the resources available but I find it also quite interesting to to sync the footage of the coaches on the sideline with the footage of the game um, so then you can actually see the instances in the game that you're referring to or you're communicating to your team about so you actually have a clear picture of that and then looking at the footage of yourself dealing with that. So if you can toggle between the two using the stacking feature on Sports Code, um, it's quite an interesting uh, way to analyse yourself and, and getting some really good feedback to yourself and the coaching group um, by doing that. Look, um, we'll, we'll wrap it up reasonably quickly. I want to try and leave a little bit of time for, this, for some discussion at the end, but um, a couple of takeaway points um, for you guys, and, and hopefully um, there's a few things. It, as I mentioned at the start, I'm sure a lot of you joining tonight are probably aware of, of Sports Code and are aware of those other technologies, but um, hopefully you took a few things away. But just to reiterate, um, Generation Z, um, I think it's important that we understand what's important to them. Uh, and how we can coach them and, and the technologies that are available to, to keep them engaged and keep them connected. Um, I think that's one takeaway uh, for tonight. Embracing technology, I think it's important that we, we embrace it. We move forward with, with time and, and embrace the technology, but I think it's important to find a balance um, with it. I think use technology as an aid, um, but probably not a, a vital tool. What I mean by that is, if, if technology, for example, if we had a blackout and there was no technology available, you still need to be able to feel like you've coached well or feel like you can coach effectively without it. Obviously, it's a great aid, but it shouldn't be something that you need to rely on to coach well. Um, so I think finding that balance between the art of coaching and the sciences that are available um, to aid and, and help your, your coaching uh, grow, but, not, um, but making sure you can still coach effectively without it. Um, and as I alluded to before, in terms of the coaching team, well, in, in my opinion, um, the coaching team is the team behind the team. And it's very, very hard to run a, a successful team or a successful program with one individual or two individuals. I think it's important that um, you, you try and bring in the right people to help, to help your team, um, your coaching team grow and then provide the best possible feedback for the, for the hockey team. 
um, and I see a lot of it, um, a lot of junior teams and then junior people that have, have just taken their one team all the way through juniors and had they been the same coach the whole time and that's fantastic but there's no assistant coach, there's no one else helping and it's a really big burden for that one person to take uh, and work with the team. And I do see a lot of players burning out, but I'm, I'm seeing a lot of coaches burn out at the moment as well. So if you can, um, try and bring in some other people. I know that it's hard these days to get volunteers, but even if they don't necessarily know a great deal about hockey, there's there's no reason why they can't learn to, to operate a video camera and learn some basic coding to, to give you some support and assistance there. Um, and as they if, if they find they enjoy it, they um, they may learn more about hockey along the way as well. Uh, but more hands make lighter work. And I think it's important that rather than trying to coach the game yourself, get someone to video it, code it yourself, give give all this feedback. If, if you can have a few people, I think it's an, an important way for you as a coach to, to work with a group of, of other coaches and also it takes the burden off you a little bit as well. Um, guys, that's, that's pretty much all I've got tonight. Um, if Mark, if you wanted to, to open it up um, to the... Um, to unmute people and we can have, have some, take some questions. Um, more than happy to, to have a chat, uh, chat some hockey and chat some technology and hopefully um, go from there. Can you hear me, Mark? Thanks, Matt. That uh, presentation was fantastic. Um, if anyone has any questions, two options are either to go through the chat function um, and just type in the chat the question or I can just um, repeat it to, to Maddie or alternately if you can unmute yourself and um, just touch base here um, one at a time. So um, open forum and everyone is more than welcome to, um, 